I can't keep up with the changes. Go ahead. Whoop de doo. Oh, come on. Col <laughs> Columbus, thumbs up, thumbs down. You don't care. Well, I mean, Ameri this Ameri is history, goes right? Ameri Gove This is Ameri Gove Aspucci was here first. That's it. Well, the, the, he, he, uh, there's, there's some questions about that. You're right. You're right. Um, hope everybody had a good weekend. <clears throat> I, I am still here hibernating in North Carolina. I'm um, going to be back to either San Diego or Colorado, probably in early November. Uh, we got a good topic today. Am I recording? Yes, I am recording. Uh, we have a very good topic today. Hold on. I want to uh, make sure I got this. Uh, we're all good. Um, basically, have you ever given the million dollar presentation, the presentation you prepared for, the presentation you were ready to give so you could make that commission, make that deal, get that contract, and you worked really hard on it, and it did, and then the prospects still said the same old tired thing. What are mm. they? What's that same old things that they always say when they don't want to make commitments? What's that brilliant system that prospects have? I'll think. I'll about think it. about it. Think about it. What's the other one? There's a there's a couple of good ones. Let me talk to my wife. Yeah, let me talk to my spouse. Yeah. What else? I'll consider it. I'll consider it. Okay. Well, I'll, get back, to, I'll get back to you. And when? <laughs> In the near distant future. How about how important is it when someone gives you a wishy-washy answer to pin them down or fire them? God damn. Uh, Dave, uh, Dave Skullnick, uh, you know, you're a great guy. Thank you for all the information. Someone's giving, I'm getting feedback from somebody. You got to choose somebody else. I haven't had my coffee. There we go. Oh, you muted yourself. I haven't had my coffee yet. I'm not does, working does it, on all here, cylinders. There you go. Have a little Perrier <laughs> instead. Okay. Wait, and Have don't a give me a boo-hoo tissue. It just hurt. <laughs> <laughs> like I got those ready too. We always have our boohoo tissues ready. Um, the thing is, what do we do when they give us a wishy-washy answer, Alex Gillian? Um. Okay. So, what what do you have to think about? Well, I'm just you know we just met. It's the first time. I don't know if I'm ready to rent your house for three years with an option of purchase. This is a big decision. Um, it's my first house and I'm 89 years old. Um, and, um, you know, so, uh, I don't like to rush into things. I like to think about them. I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to the John Andrus church and, and light a candle and, and uh, hit a few golf balls and have a few drinks. Um, and I'll get back to you pretty soon. You're, well, you're, you're, a great I, guy. you're a great guy, by the way. I really appreciate you. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, I, I think you're a great guy too. You know, I, I Unfortunately, I have I have some other people that are looking at this property right now. So oh, okay. you, you, don't, you don't really have time to think about it. You either make the decision today or, or you know, I just will go to the next guy. Well, just go to the next guy. I don't like pressure. I don't respond well to bullying. How dare you? <laughs> no, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings or anything like well, that. See, but... Now he's backpedaling. <laughs> right. right? <Yeah. laughs> now he's backpedaling. Who wants to take a shot at that? I'm going to get tough on somebody today. Hey, you doing? hey, Brandon. Good morning. Good morning. Tracy Phillips, you got to wait a second. Tracy Phillips is here too. Tracy, turn on your video. We've got a uh, we've got a success story here, I believe. Great. Got to unmute you. There we go. Hey, let. I heard you had some success last week. I don't know. Rumor came. Rumor came around here to North Carolina. I did. It was a. It was, a, it was actually a pretty good week. <laughs> what do you mean by a, what's a pretty good week? You had a you had a double double at In and Out Burger, and you didn't spill it on your lap while you were driving. Or I mean, what do you, what do you mean? <laughs> now, I uh, I got a contract signed, and I'm in escrow, uh, and I stand to make sixty thousand. Yay! Wow! Wow! Good job. Could could you elaborate? Could you could you put a little more je ne sais quoi into that? A little more? Could you? What? It was a two and a half million dollar home, I believe. We lost him. Oh. Oh. Oops. And uh, uh, so here was the uh, here was the interesting thing that was a little bit different was I used guts all while I was doing my uh my open house 
And so there were buyers that were coming and you know how they do, they, they shop. And, uh, uh, every time a buyer would come, I would basically hit them with the old, the old guts move, which is, I'm sorry, this house is, uh, you know, we, we, we've got a lot of attention. We've got a lot of offers on it. We'll probably be making a decision. It, it's probably, you probably won't get a chance. It's, it's a little bit too late. I mean, but I'm just saying, I'm just, you know, imagine with me for a moment that you were able to get it. You, you'd be willing to go, you know, 250000 above ask, right? And um, it just really, it, it, it really was the timing and um, them seeing that a lot of people were coming and we got, you know, four or five offers and all were above um, um, above my list price. Actually, it was, it was, so they were all about two hundred fifty thousand above. <laughs> wow, two hundred. Wait price. a second. So you listed a prop. Was this your listing? Yes, is my listing. And you were telling people who were thinking about it that they better um, they better make an offer at least a quarter of a million dollars over and above the asking price. Absolutely. Uh, and, How and the dare you? Is, How do you? Where do you get such chutzpah? Are you kidding me? That's unbelievable. How do you do that? Was it an true. auction? No, no, it wasn't an auction. Um, but but what we were doing, what we did different, was we ran an open house with a team, and they could see that I had intentionally placed a property um, undervalued, and that it was gonna. It, it was a. I mean, I mean, you could walk in the house, and you could see the money. It was just opulent right away and um you know buyers started looking at themselves and they would come up to me and ask questions and and i and i would tell them you know you know there's i'm just there's a lot of interest i mean there's a couple people that are talking about bringing cash offers so um we we almost got to we almost got 2.6 <laughs> so, and, wow. and the, the 2.75 did come in um but the, the owner decided to go with uh 2.5 cash mm. Wow. This, is, this was a property in Escondido, not La Jolla. Wow. Correct. Right. Correct. Two and a half million dollars in Escondido. Escondido is a lovely area. I go there very often. My favorite vineyard or phila is right there. It's by the Wild Animal Park. And it's a little northern. We would call that what? North, north County, wouldn't we? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, and, and it's a beautiful home. Uh, by the way, tell everybody the marketing you did, just really quick. Yes. You did a video that is spectacular for marketing. I did. I did. I did actually a series of three videos. The first one was only just a real quick, like thirty seconds that I can get on Google and Instagram. And then the second one uh, I did was about a minute that I can get on Facebook. And the third one was actually about five minutes, which was uh, myself. And one of the owners giving a tour of the property, and um, it was professionally edited with a, a, a camera. But um, there was a lot of great response, <laughs> great response to this it marketing. Was, it was amazing. And you said you used guts um, in this whole thing. So basically, you you, were very, you had a very honest dialogue. You told them up front, folks, you don't have the you don't have time to think about it. Yeah, something to that effect. Yes. You said right. Not yes. Not only that, but. Um, even so, even the cash offer, I wanted them to know um, that, you know, we weren't playing around and that there were a lot of people um, that were still interested in the property, even though we were giving them the first right of refusal to do their inspection. So what I did was when they were doing their home inspection, um, I actually still had people showing up that wanted to see the property. And it kind of like made them feel like really like, you know, uh, upset because <laughs> they wanted, but it, it helped push them over the mark to hmm. to make the decision to go all in. Okay, we, we, we're, we're removing all contingencies, hmm. uh, no, lo no loan, no appraisal, no inspection. Wow. Um, only thing they wanted to review was the title and not even review the HOA document. So Holy um, smokes. It, it definitely felt like, uh, you know, the guy in the bar and there's like four girls going, going after him. <laughs> and then the one that he was trying to get to, to answer him. So I had never done that before, but it was, it was totally a, something that came to me as a guts move. And I found that it helped to convert that buyer with, with a sense of urgency and scarcity. 
and the fact that there was competition of people still trying to um, get that property where they basically made it so easy that sellers couldn't say no. Duke, a quick question. Um, Brandon Carswell said, uh, could you share the video? Could you post, uh, did you, uh, you have that on YouTube or privately? I do, I have it, I have it on YouTube. Can you, can, can, you, share can you share the link um, in the Skype group today with everybody or, or in the chat box right now? You're driving, so probably later in the Skype group. It's a very nice video uh, that you, it looks very professional. Um, absolutely. Now you just said something interesting because I'm into psychological triggers, closing people. So you, you basically use the scarcity, but you also say, hey, this is the only property. There's no other properties available. It's a beautiful Correct. neighborhood. And Escondido is really a hidden treasure. Escondido has those beautiful rolling hills mm. all over the place. I mean, it's a really love. It gets a little warm in the summer, but it's a beautiful area. Um, mm. It's a little bit inland. Mm -hmm. I feel like it even went a little bit deeper than that because when they were walking in the house, I was just telling them, I just I want to want to be straight up with you. This is not a two point two million, but this is a three million dollar house. And you, you know, just take a look, you're gonna see. And it started to it was working. <laughs> it mm -hmm. worked because everybody was like, This house is way undervalued. <laughs> this is way undervalued. So it, it really did work. So whoever thought three million dollars, two million, three million dollars in es homes in Escondido, amazing, isn't it? Wow, isn't that amazing? So, uh, real estate's got been fun this year in, in La Jolla, but we always remember what goes up can eventually flat down. out or even come Not in down. Southern California. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. I remember two thousand eight. Uh, I re still remember two thousand eight. When overnight yeah. real estate just dropped twenty five percent or more in certain neighborhoods, over literally overnight. Remember that? Yes. Um, oh yeah. Tracy, you know what I love that Tracy yeah. used. He used a little scarcity. Mm -hmm. Okay, he did some what we call a guts move, shock and awe. I call it sometimes. But he also used social proof. We don't use talk about social proof very often. Social proof is everybody. Nobody wants to be the odd person. Okay. Um, Nobody, everybody wants to get along with everybody else and keep up with the Joneses and stuff. So if you say, hey, people are lining up, people are overbidding for this house. It's going to be gone by the end of today, maybe tomorrow. So many people are interested in this property. So if you don't feel it's right for you, you don't have to take an immediate, you know, don't worry about it, but it's going to be gone. And why do you yeah. think all, why do you think all these other people are so interested in this house right now? Because there ain't no because there ain't no inventory, right? Yeah. 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 So I, yeah. I I love when we use these. You know, you didn't have to, and this is our topic today. How do, you know? Are, you, are we going to give million dollar presentations that the prospect will never hear? You know that pro. You know that we've all met that salesperson where we we just flap our gums, we tell them everything they didn't want to know about the property. Oh, look, there's a bidet. Oh, look at the square footage. Oh, look at the sunroof uh, and everything. And, and all they want to know is, can they afford it? Or, you know, they like it already. So you don't have to, you don't have to go into the Berber carpeting and everything like that. And so you didn't give a million dollar presentation per se. You did, maybe, maybe we, you performed more like a questioning diagnostician. You ask questions. And, and that's kind of the point of today. So a round of applause for Tracy Phillips. Hey, what did you, what did Mrs. Phillips say you, when you came home, honey? We won the lottery, baby. What did, what did your wife say? Did you get one of those good moments, moments in a marriage, right? You're, you're, you're muted still. Oh, it's, it's, it's definitely a great moment. I mean, that, you know, it can ease a lot of tension. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah yeah that's a, those are good those are good moments when you make a lot of money off the sweat off your own brow and yeah. you know, so uh what are you going to do go to disneyland or list or get three other properties like that i'm trying to get three other properties i mean go with the momentum and uh um dominate yeah use that momentum you use the great word momentum what do what do most people do when they make a sale they make a they make a great deal and everything. What's the next thing they do? Take a nap, right? Mm -hmm. Relax, take a vacation, spend the money. What's what's a gut salesperson do, Alan? On to the next prospect. Go use that energy. 
Use that yeah. energy, use that momentum that you have. You always want to be juggling three, four, five deals at a time because you always know one or two are going to fall off. Another one's going to be on hold or delayed. So you want that you want that constant funnel of deals coming in. So keep whatever you're doing, keep doing it and do more of it. And maybe use can do you think Tracy should use this deal to help get other get him other deals? Yes. If I if you were selling a home and you heard about this phenomenal Remax agent in Coronado which is a very nice area to have an office in. You heard about this agent there who just so did this one deal. And how long did it take you to sell this property? Literal, how many hours, I should say? Uh, in preparation, it probably took maybe 12 days in preparation because of how that big. Uh, I'll be honest with you, we had to go through and, and, and get it cleaned and all the, there was, there's like 150 windows in this house. Wow. <laughs> And they're big. It's 7,100 square feet. So it's giant. Jeez. And uh, the other thing is, uh, but it only took, once we put it on the market, uh, it was, we, we had an offer accepted within seven days. So. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, just keep, just uh, sit down, think about, hey, what did I do right? What did I do wrong? And do more of it. So good for you, man. Nice going. Nice. Thank you. I like I like hearing that's what I like hearing people making a lot of money. I love that. It's because you thought different, you sounded different, you spoke different. Who anybody who else has a success stories here, or a question, or a role play? Well, I have a I have a guy real quick. Um, this is Alex over here in Denver. Um, there's a property I've been seeing for a long time. That's uh, it's you know tax delinquent of two years. It's been empty for multiple years. And uh, called the guy last month, tried to send him a, like an electronic sign. He's like in his 80s. That didn't work out. Tried to send him certified mail. That didn't work out. So I sent a, uh, a mobile notary this morning. It cost me 225 bucks. Um, but moving forward on that and getting a house and uh, hopefully either going to flip it or, or wholesale it for maybe 20 or 30 grand. So we'll see how this goes. Excellent. Excellent. So you do you? I didn't hear the one part. Do you have the contract on this already? I verbally yes, but no. I just sent the mobile notary this morning. Okay. Okay. When are you going to get it back? That's a better. Let me rephrase. Overnight. Overnight and, through FedEx. And you got it. And you got a commitment on that. Yes. That's yep. what, that's what you want. Always get that. Was the role play we were going to do before, Alex? <laughs> Go back and let's go back into that role play. Alex, you're great. I love the house. Um, I'm going to um, I'm going to talk to my wife about it. Um, I'm going to uh, and I'll get back to you pretty soon. OK, buddy. Hey, what, what do you mean pretty soon? I, it sounds like you're maybe not ready to do this, huh? No, no, I'm ready. I mean, but we just met. I just looked at the house. I mean, it, it looks like it's exactly what we wanted. We've been looking for eight years for a house like this. Um, you know, and, um, I, I don't want to move too fast. Okay. Well, I mean, I completely under, other, understand there's a lot of people that do want to move pretty fast on this. So maybe this just isn't the right time for you. Well, it, it's, it's, you know, it's a very expensive house. I mean, I could have bought a house like this eight years ago for $200,000 and now you want what? Six, 700,000. Yeah. I mean, properties just appreciate, as you know, year over year. So, I mean, maybe in the next eight years, this might be worth, you know, another 20 or 30 percent more than it is now. But um, I don't know. Do you want me to just move on to somebody else or do you think you and your wife want this so you guys can get out of that apartment? Well, can I get back to you later this afternoon? I mean, in theory, you can, but it might not be available. I mean, if you want to make this decision, it's up to you. OK. Could I, could I say what about if you were to say, um, you know, it is a beautiful house. It sounds like it's everything you've been looking for. If you really love it, how about you put a, sm a, a, a small deposit down right now? And then that will lock it. You'll be in first position. And, you know, if, if you do change your mind, you, you, can, um, you can get out at a later point. But I think you're going to really be happy that you 
jumped into this now because otherwise it could be gone by tomorrow. I like that move. A little okay. skin, a little skin in the game. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Jessica, give me, give me a check for, give me a check for $5,000. I will not cash it uh, until we speak today at 430. Okay. Uh, if you want the house, we've got the money. I'll call up the attorney tomorrow morning and we'll open up escrow. If you don't want it, um, I'll rip up the check. I'll rip up the credit card, whatever. Okay. Okay. Is that, is that fair? That's a deal. That's a what deal. Happened? What, what, what happens if Jessica says, well, no, that's, I'm not ready to give you money. I don't trust you is what she's really saying and everything. What does that really, what do you, do, what does that really tell you when she won't put a little, a little refundable money into the deal? Not serious enough. Not serious enough. How about a guts move, a shock and awe move? How about a, anybody ever do this? These are the shock and awe moves. I call them guts moves. Alex, can I tell you the truth or should I just make you feel good before I get off the phone here? Right, right. Yeah, no, just tell me the truth, man. Tell me you and your lovely bride, you were look, you've been looking for a home for eight years. You have literally, and please don't get mad at me, but you have literally lost a half a million dollars in appreciation for the area you're looking for. You've yeah. lost a half a million dollars, not to mention uh, you would have paid down the principal substantially by now and had even more equity besides the appreciation and the tax benefits. So for eight years, yeah. Did you live in your grandmother's basement or did you rent a house or an apartment? Yeah, we just lost out on all that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, guess, I guess you did. So do you want to keep, I mean, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, 28. 28. Do you want the next 28 years to be uh, just wasting money on, on landlords and renting and let everybody wow. watch everybody? Watch everybody else like Tracy Phillips make a fortune while you're you're making your landlord rich. I mean, is that what your life is about? No, that's good. That's good. Yeah, that's really a wake up call. Woo. That's a hard Sometimes, hit for a Monday morning. <laughs> here's, the, here's the rule. Sometimes you've got to step on their toes a little, you know, rather than let it go on the honeymoon period. Say, look, you're making a mistake. Can I tell you the truth before I go? Please don't get mad at me. And then you can even say, I knew you'd get mad at me. No, no, I'm not mad. You always get the same response. And this is how you control the conversation with people in a lot of, in a lot of different ways. And the thing is, maybe you need to say the truth. You got to throw it out there. Say, hey, look, you just don't have the guts to make a commitment. Listen, you told me you have the credit. You told me you have the down payment. You told me you have a good job. What's the worst that could happen here? Why don't you have the guts to make a commitment on a home for your family? Mm -hmm. This is a little work. It's dangerous. The sales is dangerous. I always say that, isn't it? Absolutely. Do, yeah. do salespeople ever tell the prospect, we tell them what we think they want to hear, but should we tell them once in a while what they need to hear? Yes. Yeah. Because they're in this dream world sometimes, aren't they? Yes. Good role play. Good luck on your deal, Alex. Thank you. And, Love that. Yeah. And uh, for those of you, by the way, in the chat box uh, right now, Tracy, thank you so much. Tracy put the link on that video I was talking about. Um, he did a promotional video. It was um, Let me show it to you guys for a second here. Would you like to see it? Yeah. Say it like you mean it. I'm sensitive. <laughs> Say it like you mean it. Say it like you mean it. There we go. Can you see my screen? Take a, take a look at this. Look at that. Look at that view. Wow. Wow. Three million dollars. Holy smokes. There's, not even, there's no pool. Oh, not yet. Oh, wow. Wow. Look at this, look at this opening. Welcome to the big house. Come on in, we love to give you a tour. This enchanting house is about to take your breath away. I love this. Yeah. This wall has a semi-precious stone inlay and it was replicated from a Spanish designer. So you actually have the semi-precious stones surrounding you as you enter into these elaborate and high vaulted ceilings. 
So with a property of this caliber, obviously you're looking to make a statement. And that front door does exactly that. This is a one-of-a-kind hand-carved door. It's just an enchanting way to invite guests into your home with this unique one-of-a-kind door that was custom built for this home. And you have the opportunity to let beautiful sunlight in through this front door. Even though it's hand-carved wood, you still have these beautiful window panes. And they give a tour of the whole house here. So that was actually a very unique feature of this home. Beautiful kitchen. This kitchen has so many details to it. It's so fun. View shot so tell again. Tell us about this spacious shower. They're in that shower. Let's um, do that. Uh, what I like is in the beginning he did. I don't. Uh, Tracy, if you're there, did you uh, did you use a drone for the overhead shot with the view, or is that? Yeah, that looks like a drone. Yeah, it looks like. Yeah, it was a drone. Yeah, did um, beautiful. I mean, it it sells itself. That video is very nice. You did a great job there. Yeah, man. really good. Oh, it's all about it's all about marketing, isn't it? Yeah. Getting the getting the message out to people uh, on there. So thanks for sharing that video there. It's in there. You guys want to watch it later. Um, I'm all about marketing with videos. Uh, attracting prospects, buyers, sellers, investors. Majority of people in this room are in real estate. We want to talk to people, but we want to talk to qual. I say, I call it quality people, quality prospects. I don't want to do. Uh, uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, you know cold calling all day long from lists and scraping and stuff like that. There's nothing wrong with it. The the only problem is it's very time consuming, and I think emotionally it's draining making calls, getting a lot of rejection. When someone calls you and says, I'm interested, I want an appointment, I wanna buy a home, sell a home, I wanna lease option a home, I have a home, I have money to invest and I wanna do a deal with you. How much do we love those phone calls when they, when they text us, email us, call us, set it, uh, everybody here should have a calendar on their webpage, by the way, Make it easy for people to set up appointments with you, even if they miss it. Well, look at that. Oh, wait a second. We got to have we got to go to our doggy moment here, Alex. OK, there he goes. Hold up your puppies. There he is. <laughs> OK, anybody else have dogs in the in the room here? Dogs or cats in the room? Does he have 13 chihuahuas? 13 chihuahuas. They say we can't go an episode of Monday right. morning without talking about chihuahuas. There's another one. <laughs> it's a dog's life, man. Not bad. Show us the map. Can you see the mountains from your home, uh, your house there? Can you see the mountains from your house, Alex? Because I heard they got snow. I heard the mountains got snow. I'm in North Carolina here. I can't see any. I can't see any mountains. Let's see if I can. Yeah, get we'll get some snow here probably in the next couple of days, which is unfortunate, but oh well. Oh, let's see you here. I'll look at my house here. Uh, oh, it looks like the leaves dropped. Here's uh, my camera. I have a live uh, wise camera on my home here. This is the outside. Uh, look at the yesterday. The leaves were bright orange, and it looks like they dropped. I heard they were getting snow in the mountains of Colorado. It's going to be an early ski season. Um, questions? What, are you, what? What do we want? Any other questions here on this? Good topics today. Excellent topics. The hard part isn't really selling the house. I mean, that's hard too, but the hard part is really finding those homes, finding those opportunities. How do we find homes? How do we, yeah. how, do, how do we get the fence sitter? That's a good, a good question. Yeah. How do we get a fence sitter? Somebody who's yeah. had that conversation at the dinner table Hey, should we, you think we should sell a home? We were thinking of moving anyway. We don't need this home. We don't like the, uh, we're tired of managing tenants and toilets. Um, should we leak? Should we get out at the top of the market right now? Yeah. What, what should we do? You know, is that the person we want to contact? Yes. Oh, remember we were talking before about marketing. Uh, what do the gurus always say? Uh, marketing sales is a numbers game but yeah. what do they really mean by that sales is a numbers game make a hundred phone calls before lunch and then if a hundred people say no or don't answer the phone make another hundred phone calls 
Is that what they mean when they say sales is a numbers game? What does that really mean? Numbers is opportunity. Numbers is possibility. Hiring though, Jessica, aren't numbers just calling and calling and calling? I mean, isn't that? Does anybody no. get up in the morning and say, "Oh boy, I can't wait. I'm going to make all these phone calls." Oh boy. I have to trick myself if I do that. What do you? How do you do that? How do you do that, Brandon? It's rough. How do you get up? I play music, by the way. When I when I make when I got to make some phone calls or follow ups, and so I play a little music. For, I like music. Yeah. I play music yeah. all day long. I yeah, love. I do, I do the same too. Uh, yeah. How would you make How would you make the videos, uh, the free videos, with like life insurance? How How would you do that for uh, free marketing? Hi. Do you think you're gonna die someday? I have a solution. You know, <laughs> I have something uh, to protect your. No, you. Can, it's a very serious topic, right? Why does it, did anyone wake up this morning and say, yeah, you know, um, uh, gee, uh, gee, do I have enough life insurance? Do you think they wake up and say that? No. What do you think, what, what would, what's something you could say that would capture an interest that would stimulate interest or get a, we're looking for a reaction. We want, we what's the reaction we want when someone sees our marketing? Get them emotional. Emotionally emotional, yes, correct. What do we want them to do, though? Yes, we want to get them emotional. But what's the action we want them to take when they see our marketing or video or whatever? Pick up the phone and call. Yeah. How do you get somebody? Did you ever see something that caught your interest on the Internet? Say, oh, I got to go to that Web page right away. Click. And you go right to it. That's interesting. Oh, I got to watch that video. Oh, I just read this book, uh, this article in The New York Times. And they said, I've got to get this book. What, how do you get somebody to instantly react? Brandon? Put them heart strings, get the heart strings moving. With your heart strings. So what can you say to somebody? Insurance is, um, insurance is kind of, um, it's, a, it's a touchy little subject, isn't it? Life insurance? It's a necessary evil. It's a necessary, but, but what's, <laughs> but it's not, um, how do you get somebody to react right away? Woo. Um. Take them out of the equation and see who's left to carry on without them. The thing, um, the thing, the thing I would do, Brandon, is incentives. I give, I give incentives. Give, give away free shit. Okay. okay. A free book. A free, a free will. A free will. Living will. Mm. A free living will. Uh, uh, write mm. a book or a short uh, video. Make a video or a little white paper. Short uh, report. Um, five mistakes that people make when buying life insurance. Three things you need to know to protect your family forever. Um, how to create a million dollar estate mm. in your lifetime. How to put your kids through. No, hey, no. Go ahead, Sean. Sean. Oh, okay. I thought he, he came on and then. Um, term, versus, term versus whole life. <laughs> Well, that's too dry, though, isn't it? Okay, I got you. It's good. Uh, report, term versus whole life. What are the advantages and disadvantages? Oh, when to buy, when to buy term and when, and when not to buy, uh, uh, when to buy term and when to buy whole life. How about life insurance for dummies? Any, anybody here love those dummy books? Uh, that I they do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know? I like those. It, it Another one that really is kind of clickbaity is like, watch this before you get term insurance or watch this before you get whole yeah. life. I don't know why. I know it's a trick, but I still click. Uh, on this video. Yeah. Clickbait. But you got to be creative. Uh, free information, a free product, a free service. Um, I do free. Con I do a free book. I do free video. I do videos with controversial. Got to put a great title. If you're using YouTube or TikTok or some or a one minute videos are really hot right now in TikTok, Instagram, uh, YouTube, uh, you can put them in LinkedIn, um, one minute videos with a really sexy title. What do I mean by a sexy title? Eye catcher. Something that catches their attention right away. Three, uh, three ways that helped me to create a multi-million dollar estate for my family. Mm -hmm. uh, what to do when the meteor strikes. 
Um, it, it can be silly. It can be interesting. It, uh, it can be anything that gets their attention, but it starts with the title. And with the title, this is important. You've got to put how much, how important is the picture in YouTube when you're going over videos and stuff like that? And you're just picking videos. Do the, does the picture make us click on that particular video? Yes. Just for me. Yeah. You better have a good picture. So get a copyright picture from YouTube. Uh, go into Google, type in your subject, uh, look for videos, uh, look for pictures that are non copyright protected, or buy the video if it's for sale, or create your own video. Mm. Uh, uh, create your own picture, excuse me. Okay, so you gotta have the title, you gotta have the picture, and then you've gotta have the content. Maybe do a one minute video, get right to it, move real fast, and then put a link inside. You can, it's very easy to do on YouTube, by the way. Put in a link, hey, want more information? Want a free consultation? Want my book for free? Click on this link, go over there. Then they go to your web page. Don't skip the pop-ups and the bubbles and all the other garbage there and take them directly to the free stuff. So what's the one thing you want? You want to capture their email or God forbid their phone number or make them so incentivized. I don't know if that is that a word. I think yes. It, yes. Uh, thank you. Um, so that they schedule an appointment with you. How much fun is that when they what come to you? We all That's love beautiful. warm calls. It's big. it's big. It's big. So do we give you a few ideas there, Brandon? Oh, great. Great. So you said I pretty much create a funnel. A funnel from uh, a funnel. But make it original. Make it different. Don't do what everybody else is doing. Do we tend to copy each other? Yeah. Do we do, we do the same? Tired, bored. If I see another guru with another web page and just scroll, it goes on and on and on. They sucked you in with clickbait. You go to the landing page and then it just scrolls forever. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that just me, me too. That just turns me off. Mm -hmm. Why don't just give them right to the content? Keep yeah. your credibility. I mean, yeah. they must be doing it because it worked. But is that really your prospect? The person who's going to just get sucked into all this? Do you, you want quality product? We're talking most of us are real estate, life insurance, and all different kinds of things. How, mm -hmm. how much do we? I'd rather have three quality prospects than then then chase a thousand garbage a cold call leads yes i, I mean i that that's just the way i look at it tracy phillips what did, i forgot how much did he say Sixty thousand he made one good property that's a good day's work isn't it yeah more than a day's work let's yeah. talk about let's talk a little bit about the subject at hand for today the mill can are you going to um do you give million dollar presentations and the prospect, well, the prospect, I know we all talk about pre preparation and everything like that, but does the prospect really hear our presentation? The traditional salesperson tr presentation. What happens, let's uh, who's gonna be a realtor here? What's, what's the traditional realtor sound like to a new prospect or investor? What do they sound like? Canned. What is that? What's canned mean? Demonstrate a canned, uh, a canned. Uh, hi, Jessica. I saw your ad in the paper about this investment property in um, uh, outside Las Vegas. I'm kind of interested in it. Just, just sort of the, the it's a standard. Role play it with me. Tell me, um, you're going to um, go on and on, right? About the whole. So this home is is your dream home. <laughs> it's. Got, you know, um, 35, uh, 40, 4,000 square feet with a uh, um, endless swimming pool. They call them infinity swimming pool and okay. Um, well, well bathrooms. Uh, that's great. Thank you for lunch. Thank you for driving us around. Thank you for the 45 minute slideshow. Um, we'll uh, send me some more information and uh, we'll think about it. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'll get back to you in the near distant future as Somebody said that earlier, Dave or somebody. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. You didn't make any money. You invested a lot of time, maybe even bought them lattes and burned up gas. What's gas? Oh, gas. I'm in North Carolina where gas is usually 
like a dollar something here. It's $3.15 here now. Oh. What is going on in California if gas in North Carolina is $3? 99 here at Costco. How much? How much? 3.99. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, wait. Yeah, 3.99. That's all? Oh, okay. I figured it would be five and a half, six dollars by now. There's a lot of places that are way more. I'm just talking Costco. Oh, okay. That's not bad at all. Okay. I was just wondering. Sorry to digress there and everything. So what does the gut salesperson do when he gets a prospect? Does the gut salesperson give that premature presentation? That, that's the problem. Premature presentations. Yes. On amateurs. So what does a gut salesperson do? That's different. That's unique. Just get right down to the, the heart of the matter that, you know, the what's really relevant and important in that yeah, moment too yeah yeah who else who hasn't spoken yet bill pinnell let's let's get you in there with that look at that nice blue shirt on a monday morning yes sir bill what do we do what, what do you think a gut salesperson we should do by with an inquiring prospect bill i'm real into i saw your ad bill and your web page and great stuff and i had a whole bunch of questions to ask you hey that's great i'd love to help you out and answer your questions what are you looking to do? Well, we saw your ad on the house and uh, we're thinking, uh, and it said rent to own. And uh, that's kind of what I was looking for, a rent to own house. Could you tell me more? How's that rent to own work? Uh, could you tell me more about it? And show me, can you show me your 40 minute slideshow? Well, that's a great question there, Claude. But um, are, are you interested in moving right now? And are you interested in moving up right at this time? Okay. How about you ask me a question that forces me to give you a lot of information. Mm -hmm. Well, Claude, what, what have you been Claude. doing? Claude, you, you, you know, you don't look like a spring chicken. Uh, uh, do you own a house now? Have you been renting? Or, uh, why, why now? Why, why buy? You're, you know, why did you keep renting or living in your mother-in-law's basement or something? Hey, Claude, um, if you, mind, you don't mind me asking, why are you... Uh, looking to uh move out of your mother-in-law's basement right now well, it's it's you know it's kind of a mom tends to walk in at uh inappropriate times and interrupts my wife and i and the 12 chihuahuas and um <laughs> you know we've had the we've had wardrobe malfunctions and things like that and we we think it's time to maybe look into getting our own place have some privacy uh i i can relate and i can understand that uh that's that's very interesting. I, my mind slipped with, I, I, I had a thought. Practice. Practice. <laughs> exactly. Now, here's a I, rule for you guys. Usually the first answer is bullshit. Right. <laughs> okay. They give the first spontaneous answer. Why? Because when they play card, this is poker, and they keep their cards close to their chest, right? What's the real, you want to find, that might be the, that might be an emotional reason. That might be a good reason. Okay. And you might want to push them away. Well, you know, listen, what are you going to do? Get a lock for the door. Problem solved. Now you don't have to buy a house, right? I mean, that's not the only reason why you're looking today. Is it, is it Bill? Yeah. Yeah. You would be, you would be interested in, in moving right now. It's, it's a great place. The rent is probably good. You get a lock on, on that door there. You're, you're good to go. You don't well, need mom to just, move. Mom just raised the rent. You know, oh. she wants to, <laughs> He wants thirty five hundred dollars, and we're in the attic here with all the with all the old Christmas and Halloween decoration. <laughs> bats now in there, and uh, it's uh, you know it, we we thought maybe it's a good time to get our own place, get a little bit more room for the dogs to run around, and you know. And then there's the financial aspect too. Real estate's been going up, hasn't it? Oh, uh, real estate has been taking off right now. Do you have any money? to put down on a place how much do you do you have available okay off that's a good question okay i would have gone into now why why did you bring up money claude that's okay keep you know get, get more out of me make me here's the trick here's the reason why you don't want to give the million dollar presentation you want to turn this is important this is takeaway moment guys you want to turn the prospect into the salesperson you want to make them give the presentation. You want to make them qualify themselves. You want to make them close themselves. Can you imagine getting the prospect to do all the traditional salesperson work 
by, by going deeper and deeper into the questions. You see, so let's go back in that role play, Bill. You're doing good there. Um, uh, gee, you know, we thought, well, maybe it's, you know, time to buy our own place. We've heard real estate's really going up in value and stuff like that. Well, yeah, real estate has been going up, up but um, you, you don't need to move. Um, I'm trying to. It's okay. Somebody help you. Don't, you don't really need to move at this time, you know, because real estate's going to continue to go up forever and that. Wow. And why would you be interested in uh, moving out at this time? I mean, really? Well, you know, uh, I'll, well, to tell you the truth, my brother-in-law, we, we had dinner with him. He bought his house 15 years ago in Escondido, and he just sold it for two and a half million dollars. <laughs> He just, he just, he just made, it was a $350,000 house and he just sold it for two and a half million dollars, 15 years later. And, you know, he's bragging to me and, 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 and everything. And I'm thinking about, man, I'm living in this attic with the chihuahuas and, and my mother-in-law walking in with an open bathrobe. And it's just, it's just not fun. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, I can see where that, <laughs> that would help you to I just start moving. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it is time to move out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Claude, can I ask a question on this? Sure. <laughs> so, so a couple of times when I, I get somebody and um, I try to ask them that first question of why they want to do something, I've had it twice. Um, and I, I just offended them. I, it's because I don't think I used enough finesse. So, you know, kind of being like, you know, why would you even want to sell? Like, you probably don't want to do that. And I said that, and I said it prematurely. And the guy said that it's none of your business. And then he hung up on me. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to think of what I could have done better. Maybe. I, and it was somebody who sounded like they were really busy and didn't really want to talk to me in the okay. first place. You had, a nasty, you, you had a nasty guy. Um, we get those sometimes. Maybe it wasn't your fault in your defense. Maybe you just got a bad, well, listen, we all get people like that sometimes. Sure. And, you know, I get them, you know, I, everybody get the best salespeople in the world get, get rejected still, but not as much. And that's so mm -hmm. important for us sustaining our ego or it or super ego to, so that we want to talk to people. So you get one bad guy, it's okay. But it's, 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 what I usually use is feigning ignorance. Um, Alex, could you help me out here? Something I, I don't quite understand. You've been in this house 15 years. It's a great neighborhood. It's so beautiful. Why don't you stay another 15, man? Why, you sure you want to sell it? Yeah, that's good. See, I think that's good. Feigning ignorance is different than finesse then. It, feigning ignorance. What is finesse? Let's define it. It's um, Somebody Google the word <laughs> finesse for me. Okay. What is somebody give me Style, tact, charm, and diplomacy all wrapped into one. Very good definition. Thank you. Okay. It's charm. It's savoir faire. It's, it's, Tact. it's, Tact. it's you, tactfully mm -hmm. doing something tactfully. Diplom other, diplomatic. Yeah. Diplomatic being non abrasive to somebody. Alex, you know, I'm so glad to speak with you here. Uh, I'm ready to do business today, but I don't, uh, uh, the, 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 if I understand, this is your home. You're living in it, right? Yeah, yeah, I am living in it. Yeah. Oh, um, why are you selling this home, man? Stay in that neighborhood is so good. That property will just keep going up in value. Why? Why on earth are you selling it? Well, I would sell it if I got the right price. You what? know, appreciation's high, but mm -hmm. I'm open to an offer. What's it, what do you need from me today? For what would you need? What is that a dollar amount? If you could share that with me, please, that you need from me for us to make a commitment today in writing. Well, at least something around the Zillow's estimate, I would which, think. Which is? It's like 280, 280,000. So if you got an offer for me right now for $280,000, what would happen next? I guess, I guess I would have to entertain that, right? I think that would be fair. Guess, entertain. What I don't, I'm not sure if I understand. Yeah, I mean, it would it be like an all cash type of deal, or let's pretend for a moment it is. I would like that. I would want to do that. You'd like it, but what is that? Doesn't mean yes, though, right? Correct. No, I'd probably have to talk to you know my my ficus and stuff like that, and you know <laughs> talk to your plants. 
<laughs> I haven't heard that one in a long time. <laughs> what what are we learning? My pet rock. What are we learning from this? Okay, mm -hmm. even if I don't want to pay that price and all cash, I want to structure something creative. What am I trying? I'm trying to get a commitment from him. That's part of what we want to do. Okay. Right. So, and he won't make a commitment. Everybody hear those excellent wishy-washy words Alex was using? Yeah. What does that mm -hmm. tell us, right? Even if he got his price, would he be able to do a deal today? What did we learn? Probably not. Probably no. not. Probably not. Isn't it, what would the amateur salesperson here? Try to convince them of whatever. Yeah. You know? The amateur person would go back to their presentation, would go back to the honeymoon period. Oh, this is wonderful. Thank you so much. Listen, I'm going to send you some information and uh, let's touch base Thursday or Friday or something like that, right? Then they call Thursday and Friday, get voicemail. They leave messages all weekend. They call them the other week, next week. And then they finally say, no, we're not going to do it. Wouldn't you rather get a quick no than a, a meandering maybe or probably? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So the answer yes. The answer to the question is don't give presentations prematurely. You have to give a presentation eventually. Once, so say you get a good prospect, you get a, you qualify them, they have the need, the money, it's timely, they have the authority they, and, and the character to make a commitment. You've done your agenda, you've got a commitment from them to have permission to ask questions, you've qualified them beautifully, and then you give the presentation for the close. You summarize everything they said. You maybe tell a little story and then you close them, you, okay? But most people don't sell that way. They sell in a completely different way. They give that long slideshow presentation. Hi, let me tell, oh, I'm very interested. So I, I, want us, I, want us to, I want us to enter into a conversation with people with questions. And, and when you say finesse, Alex, it's, it's basically good acting skills. Got to practice your acting skills. You got to play a role. Did you hear in the one role play? I didn't. Uh, did you guys see that long pregnant pause I did? Alex asked me a question. What happens when we yes. rapid? What happens when we're rapid fire with all the answers and everything like that? What happens when we take a, a breath there, Chris? Uh, well, when you take a breath, you know the prospect starts to. He, he kind of slows down as well and, and, and begins to, I guess you guys start to connect almost. Um, yeah. When you give a spontaneous, when a prospect goes to you, well, uh, can you, uh, well, uh, I'll give you, uh, I'll give you $100,000 and, and, and you're the salesman says, yes, yes, that's great. Uh, we can do it for that. What is that? What, is, what message did you just send to that prospect? Uh, maybe, maybe, I, maybe this is a bad deal. Maybe I should, uh, uh, I might, I might need to pull back. Maybe I could have got a better deal. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so sometimes we've got to take a breath. A lot of mm -hmm. this is it's psychology and good thespian skills together. It's really, you gotta, it's peanut butter and jelly. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's uh, it's beer and what's good with beer. Not pretzels, good. pretzels, pretzels, Snyder mm -hmm. rock hard pretzels. Mm -hmm. Oh God. Yes. Um, I'm hungry again. I'm always hungry. <laughs> It's the OMAD thing. You're hungry all day long unless you drink about three bottles of this a day um, mm -hmm. on there. But oh, I got a good video on fasting for you guys. Any, any fasters in the audience? Any, anybody else who kind of skips meals like I do? I feel great when I'm light all day long. And, and it's, it's a question of conditioning and things like that. There's a, a great doctor. Let me share this real quick and we'll get back to the thing here. Uh, I found a great video the um, other day. This doctor is wonderful. Uh, let me see if I can find him here. It's a great song right there, by the way. Oh, they're all, oh God, they're all, there's so much good music out there. Oh. Yep. Found this wonderful doctor. The other. I'll post it in here. Uh, his name is Narajam, uh, Indian uh, doctor, Indian name, and he talks and he's got a wonderful uh, video on fasting. It's about 50 minutes long. And the guy is so entertaining. And Dr. Narajan, 
Mm-hmm. Um, I'll find it and post it in Skype later today. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's he, the guy is wonderfully entertaining. And he's talking about the fountain of youth by skipping some meals or just having one meal a day or, or going 36 uh, hours without a meal once in a while. We're so conditioned to have uh, 12 meals a day. I mean, three mm-hmm. breakfast, lunch, dinner, and all those little snacks in between. You know you do it because I used to do it, right? Mm-hmm. Those little, you know, we never give our system a moment to relax and to lower our insulin. Okay, welcome to health chat here. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> so the thing about it is no premature presentations and go into that diagnostic mode. Ask questions. Why are we talking today? Gee, why are you selling that home? You're, you're living, I mean, um, gee, why do you want, you're renting and your rent is so reasonable. Are you sure? Why don't you just stay in that house, in that rent, in that rental for a while? It's only 1200 a month. Why you, are you sure? Why, why, what, what brought up this interest all of a sudden wanting to buy, sell, or gee, uh, Alex, uh, Gullion, why do you want to invest? Why do you want to invest $100,000 in real estate? Why don't, you, why don't you just put it in the, uh, put it in Bitcoin or something, man? There's some people making, oh. people making money. You know where I'm going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alex, Alex, why don't you put it in Bitcoin, man? Uh, good returns there. Yeah, it's just not... It's not something you can trust. The market can always change. I've heard that. Okay, you've done your homework. Good for good for stroke and nurture. Um, oh, put it in your bank account. What if, they must be paying what three, four, five percent? <laughs> not even one percent. Wow, that doesn't even keep up with the inflation we're starting to see. Mm-hmm. Everybody know how to measure inflation? Look at what bounty towels sell for in the Safeway. Okay. When did when did paper towels go through the? get it cost as much as a steak dinner my god <laughs> has anyone oh, seen what steaks go claudia bought me a steak last week uh just a nice little ribeye 29 dollars for mm. one steak what happened when did steak go through the roof what is going oh. on out there alex what are you eat? alex wosick you're eating in front of us here what are you what are we having for breakfast there Man, we are having some of the best cinnamon swirl bread that you've ever ever seen oh, in your life. Swirl yeah. bread with a little butter melted on it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. did you ever put peanut butter? You toast the cinnamon bread and you put a little bit of peanut butter on it. Oh, and Bill just... Sinell is drooling already. You know, like... <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? Telling stories, but the way to gain control with the prospect without giving a presentation that they'll never hear is to tell a story or to paint a picture in their mind. Telling a story is so, is so, is so powerful because it's so much more interesting. You know, funny, funny, funny thing, uh, uh, funny thing, uh, uh, Chris, uh, Chris Scott, uh, you know, I, I had a friend who had the same thing. He rented a house for 20 years and then he woke up one morning, decided he wanted to buy something and he bought a house and, and five years later, he made himself a quarter million dollars. And I don't know if that's important to you. I don't, I don't even know why I shared that story, but I don't, oh, wow. I don't know if that's of interest to you. That's amazing. That's probably the best story I've heard. How, how, did he, how can I do something like that? How did he do that? Uh, you know, he, he just came to me. I helped him and his wife find the right property. I helped him with the financing and all the legal work. I put him together with good home inspectors, a good lawyer yes. for the escrow, good title people. I, you know, when I work with someone, they become part of my extended family. Uh, I, 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 would you like to join my family? Yes, ma'am. Uh, absolutely. I mean, if, if you did that for him, I, I know I, I'm probably in a a decent situation to maybe duplicate it's that. A, why do you you know why do you think so many people i'm so busy lately it's crazy I, I did finally um, but, I, but I did have a cancellation press, and uh, right. the other day and i have one opening I, I don't know if you want to take advantage of it or wait another Not five six months and then my computer oh, I, I love to do that now i mean it, he made a five are you million sure, are you sure you don't want to wait you don't want to rush into this right I mean, you've been renting for 15 years. What's another year or two, right? <laughs> yeah, Claude, no, I, I made $100. I'm, I'm ready. I, I'm ready to go. I, I want to be just like that guy that you just told me about. Oh, well, that's great. Now, before I tell you all about how things work and everything like that, would you mind if I just ask you two or three quick questions just to find out to get the right property for the right price and the right finance? Could I ask you a couple of quick questions? You ask me whatever you like. And then we'll make a decision at the end of this conversation, whether to move forward or 
or say, let's, let's hold off. Is that fair? Yeah, I'm an open book, Claude. Ask me whatever you want. Okay, thank you. Boom, that was the agenda. Slid right into the agenda. Now we go into qualification. We ask the questions. We got to get, we got the most important one. We know on a one through 10, what's his motivation level? He was nice to me just now. What's on a one through 10, what was he? A 10, maybe a nine. 10. Mm -hmm. 10 is dangerous, isn't it? Why is a 10 dangerous in the beginning? You got to slow down. You have to, you have to be very, uh, uh, like you got to do a lot of redirection. Mm. Where can a 10 go? What's the only direction a 10 can go? Down. Yeah. Okay. So they come into that real highly motivated. They're a 10. So you gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta, you gotta be very careful, maybe even push them away. And did you see how Chris was selling? Chris turned into the salesperson in that role play. Yeah. Best part. Chris started selling me. I yeah. told him a little story. We were doing the Alex with the uh, peanut butter on the um, cinnamon bread. What did everybody have in their mind when we were talking about that? I did that for a reason. What was in everybody's mind? Food. Who doesn't want a nice piece of cinnamon toast with melted butter on it right now and a good cup of coffee? Who wouldn't want that right now? Um, exactly. My cardiologist. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And if he and if we saw if we saw Alex take it and. Mm, smell oh you can smell the cinnamon and the butter is melt and he took a bite and we heard the crunch and everything what 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 does that do to our sensory perception of the whole thing what happens you want to eat it anybody go into the mall and um oh gosh what is it? cinnamon um cinnamon buns cinnabon 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 is anybody here ever walked past the cinnabon and that smell tell me that is not the heroine of the mall okay yes <laughs> Guilty. Oh, yeah. Yes. How do you resist that? So listen, um, get the prospect to do the work, ask questions, feign a little ignorance, um, tell a story sometimes, um, uh, paint a picture in their mind using your descriptive words, using your five senses, sight, smell, taste, touch, hearing, and get the prospect, try to turn the prospect to become more talkative than the, than the salesperson. Get the prospect to do all the work and, and just avoid the whole traditional premature presentation. And because they are not gonna hear that presentation you gave until they're emotionally ready. And that's usually after the, you set the agenda, you do the qualification, you, have a, you ask a few questions, you get them talking and relaxed, then you give the presentation for the close. You relate your product, your services, all the good stuff, then you relate it to them and you summarize, and then you ask the million dollar question. What is, that's the close, the third step. What is the million dollar question after you get them emotionally involved and then you, and you get them talking and then you give the presentation? What's that million dollar close question? What would you like to do next? What would you like, Chris, what, what would you like to do next, man? I love talking with you, I could talk all day. What, what's, what, what would you like to do next? And it's okay to say no to me, you just can't say I'll think about it. So I, I'm I'm ready to. What do we need to do? Sign uh, like a contract or something like Don't that. You wanna, oh, okay. Uh, how's Miss? Uh, you? I think you said you're married. How's your significant uh, beautiful other gonna feel about this, honey? I just made a commitment with Claude to buy that two and a half million dollar Escondido home. Um, I mean, you think well, she's gonna be mad at you or something? Or not? Not at all. She trusts me. I wear. I, Claude, I, I wear the pants in this relationship. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, she trusts you when you wear the pants. <laughs> <laughs> i like that i like that hey good session guys went a little long again sorry i love talking about sales and i love role playing with you thank you so much alex thank you for sharing your breakfast and your doggies with us uh everybody give yourselves a round of applause great day today let's go let's go uh let's go out with some Can you take us out with pink floyd money oh money yeah I'm not in the money mood. I'm not at no, all. Let's okay, see. next time. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, oh, let's go. Uh, let's do living on a prayer. A little bonjo. Oh, okay, sounds good. Always good. Take care, everybody. Bye. Love the. I love this song. Yeah, it's a great song.